Hi everyone, I'm Jamie Goh. I've been looking forward to launch this video series about Singapore property market. My motive is to get you curious, to spark some thoughts, and to help us gain more knowledge so that we can become wiser when it comes to making a decision on property matters. Today, we are diving into something really interesting. How wealth in Singapore connects to property. In the same series of my other videos, I will also be sharing how the rich get richer and what we can learn from them. Let's start with a big number, something which I chanced upon Smart Wealth website last year. Singapore has around 332,491 millionaires, which is approximately 7% of our 4.9 million adult population. This is based on people whose asset minus liability exit 1 million. That got me thinking, what makes this millionaire different? How did they build their wealth? To find answer, I turned to data from SingStep website and created this pie chart on Singapore household net worth. Alright, picture this, a giant pie chart showing all the wealth Singaporeans own together. That's what we call household wealth like the total value of everyone's homes, savings, investment, minus any debts. This pie is worth a massive 3.4 trillion. Here's the fun part. Over 60% of it come from just four big slices. Private properties, HDB flats, CPF savings, and life insurance. That's huge. Meanwhile, savings and fixed deposits makes up 19.2%, equivalent to 658 billion, showing we Singaporeans are more prudent. But stocks, shares and unit trusts, they are only 11.3% combined, worth $387 billion. What stands out? We are a cautious bunch leaning on safer avenues like property and savings. But the bigger picture is in property. Private properties, which is just 23% of Singapore housing stock, as per data in 2023, hold small wealth. 24.6% or 842 billion than HDB which makes up 77.8% but only amount to 19.3% or 663 billion. This means the 23% of people who own private property have a much larger share of wealth compared to the majority with HDB flats. So what does this suggest? It looks like Private property could be the key factors in creating wealth in Singapore. Could it be that those who invested in private properties, especially during periods of price growth, were able to sell at a profit and grow their wealth faster? This data doesn't tell the whole story, but it certainly raises an interesting question about the role of property in creating millionaires. In my next video, we will dig deeper into this insight. I will share historical price trend for HDBs and condos in the past 20 years to see if the numbers back this up or if there's more to this story. What do you think about the wealth breakdown in Singapore? Let me know in the comments below and let's keep exploring together. Thank you. Bye-bye.